Hi guys, welcome to Our World Outdoors. I'm Tony, and today we're going to talk about what I feel is the best starter backpack. Now, there's some controversy on backpacks. You've got guys with mountaineering packs, you've got guys with frameless, interior frame, just every part of the spectrum is, you know, everybody likes something different. I even know guys that have the old metal frame mountaineering packs they use and they swear by them. So I figured today we'd come back into our spare bedroom here I use for my YouTube videos, which you can see my wife has taken over with Christmas presents. And we talk about the pack that I use as, you know, my overnight starter pack and why I bought it and the reasoning behind it. So for my pack, for my overnight stuff, I've uh, decided on the Teton Sports 3400 Scout. Uh, it's a 55 liter with 600D ripstop nylon. And uh, the one thing that most people don't like about this pack, I'm going to just tell you right off, is that it weighs 4.5 pounds. And most of that weight is the internal frame. Now, a lot of people are like, oh man, that's a heavy pack. Yes, it's a heavy pack. But there's a reason why I say it's the best starter pack and why it's so heavy. Now, before we get into it, let's, let's go through the real life version of when you start backpacking, okay? When you start, you're going to try and take everything other than the kitchen sink with you. That's just a fact. It's just how it happens. You're going to be like, oh, I need to take this and this and this and this and this. You'll be trying to take big knives and hatchets and anything you can think of, you know, electronics. And over time, every single person does it. You cut that down little by little. All right. The problem I have is if you go right out and you buy an ultralight pack, most of them are not rated to do anything over about 20 pounds, honestly. They're just not made for that kind of weight on a constant basis. You know, yes, you can do it. Yes, there are packs out there that can do it. But for a person starting out that you know you're going to go heavy, you know your first couple of trips you're going to just overload your pack to death, then I think this is a, a lot better point to go at. And for me, 55 liters is a pretty big pack. I don't need a whole lot because most of the time I'm with one of my kids or I'm with my wife and we're sharing the load. And I also have a lot of dual purpose stuff. Um, but let's just take a walk through this pack and I'll show you the things I like about it. And at a price point, somewhere between 50 and $60, I think you'll find that this is quite a nice pack for the money. I mean, I really feel that for what it is, it's well worth it. All right, so first thing I'm gonna show you, let me get it turned around here, is it has an adjustable height on it for different sternum lengths, all right? Now, mine is on the next to last because I have a pretty long torso. Now, it does have the cross chest, okay? And it does have the secondary pulls to pull it back in tighter to you, all right? It has the waistband. It has hangers on the waistband to pull it back even tighter. And it's got a heavy buckle, all right? Does not have any zipper pockets on it there. That's the one thing I wish it did have. Now it's got plenty of loops and holders here for like water bottle holders and stuff. But overall, it's got every kind of adjustment to pull it back to you to tighten it in and shape it to your body and your back. Every kind of one you can. Now, one thing I will say, where's it at here? There's a hydration bladder holder inside and it's got dual holes on both sides on this model. Some of the older ones don't have the dual holes in it, just so you know. All right, let's bring it around here to the side. You've got a pocket here, and you've got your regular side pocket here. 
this is rather tight on the 1.5 liter bottles. The one liter smart liter smart water bottles fit in there fine, but the 1.5s are kind of tight. Go around this side. Same thing. We got a pocket here. All right. Another pocket there and then a pole holder here. The other side also has a pole holder so you can actually put your poles up your sides to carry them. Now, one thing I'm going to say is it's this one. On almost every one of these, you see that little tiny, just a, just a tiny little rip right there. If you overload that pocket, if you watch every single review on YouTube of this pack, you'll see that that same little pocket, if you overload it, it will rip. I don't know why it is. Everyone they've ever made is like that. All right, let's carry on. Now it's got carry all straps here that I use for my sleeping bag pad and they actually work great. I throw this thing around. I do all kinds of crazy stuff. I drop it literally right off my back. Wherever I stand and we stop, I drop it. And you can see it don't let them go. So we'll unhook this, take that off. That way we can take a look at the front. Now, You'll see it's got strapping up here that way. That's where usually I'll put my shirt when it gets soaked or my towel or my buff, strap it down there. But you can unclip the brain and actually this thing, when fully done up because it's got the extra area, this thing can become almost a 65 liter. I mean, it really can, it holds that much. And then if you flip over the top here, go around this side to show you it has a really nice brain compartment here that you can put snacks or whatever maps in we have maps in it still and the zippers on this are ykk but they're the big fat ones so sometimes they get stuck just so you know so we got the brain here which actually has an interior pocket as well you can see that nice big pocket interior too and then it's got this zip tie string with actual paracord all right and then you got your hydration bladder hanger and its own vent pocket in there so you can hang it up here you got your vent pocket in there for your bladder and the rest is directional down now on the front you also have another set of paracords and a netting to hold and then it's also got cross straps. Now, before we go to the inside, some things I want to show you. Under here, well, we'll do it like this. All right. Under here, there's some Velcro. And inside the Velcro, you have a built-in rain cover for your pack. It comes with it. You can cut that off if you want to get rid of a couple out ounces maybe. But to me, I'd rather have the rain cover. There's a lot of things I can do with the rain cover. So that just Velcros down. You do want to make sure you get that closed good. So let's turn it back around here. And as you can see, you got straps there to tie more onto the bottom. I like to use these for hiking poles. You see they've got the little holes in them. I just run a piece of paracord through them. But let's keep going here. We got goodies in here. Okay. You see I pack all my trash out. <laughs> got some hand crank flashlights. So here's your sleeping bag compartment. Inside my sleeping bag compartment is my sleeping bag. It ain't you know, crushed down like it could be. But let me show you the size of the sleeping bag compartment. If you've got an actual ultralight sleeping bag, that's my sleeping bag. It can crush even more, but we'll need that. This is a huge sleeping bag compartment. I mean, look at how much room is still left in there. If you had a huge sleeping bag, it would fit in there no problem. No problem at all getting it in there. So, if you have like a huge down quilt or something. Now, 
it does have a zipper. Let's see if you can see that there. It does have a zipper. If you want to open the whole thing to be one big compartment, it does have a zipper in there for that. So if you had something that was really long or you want to put your hiking poles inside your bag or something like that, it makes it so the whole thing can be one unit. Maybe you're carrying some kind of long something. I don't know, but I'm going to turn it around and try and get it so you can see inside here as best I can, of course. But I mean, this thing is, this is not a little pack. They call it a 55 liter. I'm telling you now, when this thing's fully loaded, if you were to close it all the way up the top like that, you're going to get 60, 65 pretty easily. And I mean, this is not some light duty pack. That's why it weighs 4.5 pounds. It's got an internal frame inside there that's heavily padded. I mean, this thing's padded heavy in the lower back and on the sides to sit on your hip flexors so that it doesn't you know, wear you out. The one thing I will tell you is take those and pull them and bend it to your back. Because if not, it'll help add fatigue to your shoulders. You get this thing pulled to your back and make sure this is up on top of your hips. You'll be able to blast through miles and not even feel it back there. I mean, I went on the last trip, I think I had 30 some pounds in this thing because I was carrying most of the gear because my wife was trying out her new ultralight pack. So I had to carry 90% of the gear and we took our heavy tent too. And this thing worked like a champ. I mean, it, it held up. It took a beating. I've had it on multiple trips, multiple. And I'm actually considering using this instead of my big pack to try and do a through hike we're looking at doing later this summer. That'll be a week at a time. So I, I think that for the money and when you're starting out, I mean, honestly, 50 to 60 bucks, you're starting out, you know, you're going to take a bunch of gear. Why beat the crap out of an ultralight pack? Why not start with something a little lighter duty in the fact that it can carry more weight? I shouldn't say light duty, but I'm saying more on a budget friendly side. You know, I don't expect to get 10 years out of this pack. Three to four. Yeah. Perfect starter pack. And then I'm going to build an entire ultralight setup. So sometimes when I'm taking all my camera gear, I'm taking action camera and all the extra batteries. I'm taking the standard point and shoot camera and all the extra batteries. I'm taking the camera and the camcorder and my phone and the power pack alone in camera gear. I can get over six to eight pounds. Easy. You start adding tripod and all the other stuff. I mean, it goes up fast. So when you got food and everything else, I can put, I can put some weight in a pack. I mean, I can get the pack weight up there fast. So an ultralight pack for me is fine if I'm going for a day or two or three, but anything longer than that, and I need something heavier duty to be able to bring more stuff with me. Um, but this is just a quick look at what I'm using and what I think the best starter pack is. I mean, there's other ones on the market. This is just what I have the most experience with and what I like and what I think fits my needs the best. It may not necessarily fit yours. And if you are looking for an ultralight pack, uh, we got probably the best budget ultralight pack that you're going to find video about to come out. My wife's been testing a, a new pack and the price will blow you away. The build quality will blow you away, but that's for another video. Keep your eyes out for that one. But this is the Teton sports 3,400, uh, the scout. Once again, it's a 55 liter. I'm not paid to do this. This is not paid. There is no sponsorship. This is just what I'm running right now. And I would tell anyone who's interested in looking for a pack or for a second pack, maybe something for a little longer distances or that needs to carry heavier weight for whatever reason, that this is an, a great option and you should definitely look into it. And if you don't believe me, go watch some of the other reviews on YouTube about it. And you'll see how many people just rave about it because it is such a great pack. It's a little heavy. 4.5 pounds is a little heavy. But the comfort level is there. So I'm Tony with Our World Outdoors. And this has been our review of the Teton Sports Scout. Please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one.